Okay guys, welcome back to former Farm Kid channel. Looking at the uh, 730 here again today. <clears throat> and uh, if you've viewed the previous videos, you know that uh, the issue has been the taper lock flywheel. And uh, I'll pan back here a bit. So this is basically the flywheel cover held on by numerous bolts. Right now, I've only got it attached with three bolts because the issue has become, since I had to add a washer behind the nut, and the nut is on the top there, it has moved that nut out. <clears throat> the cover is dimensional. And it can take a it, it can take a bigger bigger nut than what actually came on the tractor. <coughs> but this nut that comes on the taper lock is exceptionally large, and it's square. Uh, if it were hexagonal or pentagonal, uh, that would re have really helped. But these are not, and with a washer behind it, it gets moved out even more. So what I'm experimenting with now is, as you can see, there's, there's very little clearance between the case and the nut. So I'm experimenting right now with spacers, shims, behind the case. And as you can see, that little space behind the shield has shimmed that out eh, about a sixteenth of an inch and that has provided enough clearance that the nut does not contact uh, the outside. <laughs> the original giveaway, this is before I had this tractor, you can see what the nut had done. When that flywheel started falling off, it cooked this whole area of the cover. It cooked it so hot that the paint got cooked off and this is where a friend of mine touched it and burned his hand and that's when I became aware that my flywheel was falling off I guess I could have should have figured that out from no paint here but you know who knows and it was knocking somewhat hard uh, loudly as, as well so uh, so as you can see because I do not want to have to take this Cover on and off every you know whatever 10 hours to check the flywheel to make sure that it's staying in place there's absolutely no guarantee and this flywheel is imperfect it has a little bit of run out to it even though it's mounted square it has a little bit of run out to it which does cause a little bit of vibration so so unfortunately, this flywheel is at risk. If I had bought this flywheel, put it on, and seen that, I, I would have. Well, <laughs> you always hesitate to send anything back that costs 220 bucks to ship out. But I certainly would have been uh, very hesitant to keep it. So what I have done is cut an inspection hole, which is one and a half inches off the center because I don't want to see the center of the crankshaft. That's not going anywhere. What I want to know, this is the hub, this is the nut, and I guess I already put my measuring stick back in. But what, what, I, what I do is I pop my uh, cover, my little plug off here, and as you can see, I have the measurement that the clearance is between the hub and the outside of the cover right here. So all I need to do now to check the flywheel that it's not coming off is to pop my plug and measure it and make sure that measurement stays at 1664. This is the plug that I bought. It's only $4. <laughs> where normally they're like 50 cents, but it takes a one hole, one inch hole, and this is a one inch plug, and it just pops in. And it's not touching the flywheel. The inside is, is pristine, it has not rubbed at all. So my shimming 
that I've done on the cover itself is working. And now that I know that's working, I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the bolts into the cover. So every week or so, I'm going to be popping this off and measuring to make sure that flywheel is not, is not moving. So you just take, press, put it over the hole, and then just pop it in. And I've run it eh, about an hour now, maybe, with the the view the viewport the view plug, and it's locks in there real good. This isn't hard plastic; it's kind of a rubbery plastic, so it has a lot of flexibility to it. It's so far keeping the water out. It's nice and tight on the top here, and it's easy enough just putting your fingernail fingernail behind it to to pop it off of there. So, uh, hopefully, I'll never have to do anything more with that flywheel, but I've already retightened it once after a couple hours of running. It did take a few more degrees of turn on the nut, which leads me to believe I need to do it again here sometime, probably within the next five hours of running time. I don't use this tractor a whole lot. It's just uh, my sweet corn tractor. And so I do not log a lot of hours with it, but if I ever see anything less than that, I know I've got a problem. But I haven't been tightening it uh, often enough. I can't make it any tighter. I had a six foot pipe wrench on it and as tight as I could possibly get it. So, uh, so we'll see, hopefully, the flywheel will now behave itself and stand there like it's designed to do. If it if it doesn't, then I've got trouble. I'm probably going to have to buy a new one. Uh, I, I frankly think there were manufacturing errors with this flywheel, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, truth be known, I probably need to replace it because it is causing the tractor to vibrate. And tractors should not be doing that. So either the counterweight on the flywheel is off or the depth control on the pour, because they are cast, uh, somehow got off. I'm not, not really sure. Uh, a new one is gonna be about 1,250 bucks. So we'll see. All right, guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Hope to see you again. Subscribe if you're able to. God bless. Keep up the great work. See you next time.